You may also know the situation from scrolling through Instagram and knowing that you should get started with your next task. Or even worse, you are sitting at a task and there's a pop-up and you are get distracted and yeah, just do something else instead of the task you should do. And many of you may also know the Pomodoro timer, so the technique of working 25 minutes and then having a five minutes break. And there are tons of apps outside and websites and Dantos Bar apps and everything. There's like multiple ways of using the Pomodoro timer. But for me, it's always another distraction. You have another thing to click on. You have another open window. You have another app open. So yeah, this was not really something that I, I like doing, uh, having more open because I want to have my window concentrate on that thing and having some little device sitting on my desk showing me the time. So you can also just use a very simple kitchen timer. Yeah, there are like multiple ways of doing that. But since I enjoy building stuff, I want to build me a Pomodoro timer that sits on my desk with like a little display and shows me how much time I have left for work and then the break time. Let's get started, grab a coffee and dive right into it. I got my coffee and since some of you complained that I don't drink my coffee but always making one, let's have a zip and get uh, right into it. So I already got a bit started. Since for the festival tracker I need a bigger battery, this little one doesn't provide enough power to power it long enough. I will reuse this battery for the project. So this is an old e-cigarette battery. As I said in the last video, it probably has like 120 milliamps or something. It should be enough for this project. So this is a charging board. This is a little five volt converter. And this is going with like a little switch into the ESP. In this case, I use an ESP C3 Super Mini. So it's like a super tiny ESP. It's very cheap and yeah, I, I like it a lot because it's like half the size of the original ESP. So I have the, or not the original, the ESP Vroom dev board. So this is the Vroom dev board and you see the, com the comparison. It's like half the size. Also, I added like two little buttons to start, stop and reset. And then a one inch little display. It's not multiple colors. So it's a one color display, white uh, text, black background. And that's the whole thing. Uh, already soldered everything together. I probably will resolder it, create myself a little casing for that, and also will explain you a bit the code. So let's take a look at the code, um, how it is currently looking. Here we define the screen width and height. Okay, and then we define the work time. It's like 25 minutes. We have the break time of five minutes. I add one second to it because um, you will see in the code that I firstly deduct the time by one and to have it like probably starting from 25, it's like 25 minutes and one second. Then we have a ticker. We have the remaining time. It will start with like a work time because usually you start with work and not with break. Uh, yeah, work or not like work or break. It is running, it's false, so we don't start with running. And this is important later, so start stop state um, because we want to debounce the state. Okay, and then we have like a little bitmap for the play pause symbol, a little bitmap for the reset symbol because one pin is for the reset and one pin is for the play and pause. So that we can show it on the display next to the button. Hopefully that will work because I didn't design yet the casing. And then we have a function that names like every second, it will be called every second. Um, and if it is running, we will deduct the time by one second or by one. And if it's like zero and we are in the work state, then we go into the break state and start the timer with like break and else. So in the total end, we will just stop. So the whole, um, the whole application is stopping. So it stops like after one full iteration. And if we are not 
at zero with the remaining time. We will just clear the display, set the text size to two, the color to white. I mean, it's the only color we have, but still, um, we will go to zero from the left and 10 from the top. So we don't stick to the top. And then we will start like if it's in the work state, we print working or hustle. If it's like in the break pay break state, we will just print chill. Then we set the cursor to 40 from the top and increase the text. And then we will just show the remaining time. And at the end, we will draw the two bitmaps to the right of the display with the play pause and the reset symbol. And that's basically it. On the start, we will just um, initialize the display or check that the address display is existing. If it's not existing, then we just fail and do nothing. And else we will attach our timer. On every second, we will call this. So attach is the timer that is called every second with the callback. And then we also show our initial display state. Um, this I definitely have to rework because it doesn't look good yet. And then we have the loop function that is basically going through the like reading from pin one and two. This is where we soldered on the, the buttons or the, yep, the buttons and reading them and say start, stop and reset. And if the reset is pulled to low, so it's pressed, then we will just reset. So we print reset, we set it's running in the work mode and the work time, and then we call the function so it's immediately called and not after one second, because if, yeah, you want to have it like really responsive and not after one second. And then we have also the start stop. And this is a bit more interesting because we only want to have it called once when you click it and not in the loop. So you cannot click as fast as the ESP is going through the loop. So if you don't debounce it, it will start, stop, start, stop until you release it. And if you release it in the wrong state or in the old state, it did not do anything. So you need to debounce it. And this is we um, this we are doing with checking if the last state is not the same as the state before, only in one direction. So if we start, like if we click it, the old state is high because the last state was high and the new state is low. So we say, okay, the button was start clicked or the, the button clicking was start. So we invert the running. So what we say is basically, if it is running, it should not running. And if it's not running, it should start running. So we inverse the state of the running. Yeah, we basically do a start stop. And at the end, we set the last state to the current state. So this is important to debounce it. If you don't do the debounce, um, it probably won't stop in the right state as you release it. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, I will now design the case, try to assemble everything and let you know in the end how it is looking, how it is working. And yeah, let's take a look at the end of the video. I will also put the code into a repository and upload it and also will list all the devices or all the parts you need with the pricing down in the comments. If you have any other questions, if you have any interesting stuff you want to see, let me know also down in the comments. If the battery won't hold up long enough, I probably need to uh, redesign the case because I still have some batteries left over from my old power drill. So I have a few of these bigger cells, two and a half thousand milliamps. Um, I don't know how they're called, like 1850 something. So they are quite popular, really powerful, and they hold up quite long. Uh, this is from my old power drill. Uh, the, the drill was broken. I just took the power back apart, took out the batteries. Um, my e festival tracker is running by, uh, at this and this is like running super well. So if this little battery is not holding long enough, I probably re need to redesign the case to put such a big battery in it and don't need to charge it more than once a week or something. I don't know how long they hold up. <clears throat> yep. 
Yeah, so let's design the case and see you afterwards. So the final result, it is working. It's a very tiny device uh, that is sitting on your desk. But as you can see, it's already dark outside. So as a typical DIY project, it took again way longer than expected. So my first uh, attempt was too small. So my first uh, case was a bit smaller, like 30% smaller or something. And it did not fit in. So I had to create a new case so that the screen is fitting in properly. All in all, it is working. Uh, the buttons are working. It's not like fiddling around. It looks good for me. So if it's like standing on my desk, uh, I can really like see it very well. Uh, the timer is working very well. So if you're interested, the code is linked down below. The parts are in the GitHub repository linked or not linked, but written down as well as the wiring diagram. If you like projects like this, happy if you follow me. And if you have any questions, answer, whatever, write it in the comments. I try to respond to all messages. For me, it was a fun project. I will use this for sure in my normal day-to-day -day work because it's super tiny. It's like you can handle it. Uh, you, you can bring it on projects. You can just put it on the desk and you see it. So very nice. The only downside I just saw now is that uh, I put the ESP in the middle of the whole thing. So I have no way of getting new code on it. Um, probably I will open it up again, create a second hole to have like two USB ports, not only for charging, but also for the um, ESP. Maybe, I don't know, uh, probably you could also use the ESP charging, uh, the ESP directly with the battery and save a few bucks without the charging board and the step up module. And probably then you also have very less energy consumption because you have some loose of energy in the step up. Uh, not sure about that. I'm quite new to the ESP world. Other than that, happy if you follow, like, or share, comment. See you soon and hope you have some fun coding and hope you enjoy these kind of videos and DIY projects. Yeah, thank you for watching. See you next time.